Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com with another match with Soul Sisters. This is a very capable hand with a Dried Militant first turn or a Martyr. We're going to keep it. We're on the draw, so we could actually draw into like a Sarah's Ascendant, and it will change our play immensely depending on what we're up against. So with this hand, it wouldn't be a too bad hand to go up against Storm. Uh, first turn Dried Militant is sometimes really, really hard for Storm to recover from. They, if they're not running any sort of main boarded lightning bolt, the dried militant will literally exile everything or force off a fast grape shot. So the dead, the pyromancer's ascension is completely dead until dried militant is taken care of. Now he can go like first turn serum visions and then have some way to at least put one counter on the the pyromancer's ascension. But again, a first turn dried militant is exactly what you want to see against storm. But with our luck, we're probably playing against something where dried militant is a completely dead card like against the junk midrange or something like that. But this is a good hand versus those type of decks too. Double rangers. Usually don't like to see double rangers in my hand, especially with the spectral possessions. I really want to hit a soul sister here, but we'll just have to wait and see who we're up against. And it's going to be a grave crawler, so it's going to be some sort of graveyard based deck, which this deck should do decent against. So let's see what we we've got going on for us. There is the first turn Sarah's ascendant, so I think we'll just we'll pop it out, and we have the martyr next turn. So we get to see that awesome Sarah's ascendant. And the reason why I played it first, he could have some sort of removal. I doubt it. I base he's full out dredge vine type deck. Um, he's gonna he's a zombie deck. And if he doesn't have removal, though, we're swinging in for six. Which could be a disfigure. Yeah, there definitely could be a disfigure here. There's a second martyr. That's just impossible for an aggro deck to come back from. But he would have used the disfigure, right? Yeah, he's 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 done. There's no way he's coming back from this. So we have the this is the the soul soul sisters kind of godly draw. As we're up to 39, I could care less about his aggression, and he didn't have anything for his black. I, I mean, he's probably gonna run another zombie this turn, a uh, undying one. No, he's gonna swing in with the grave crawlers. We have a martyr as backup, which is just really really good so it's a red red i still think this is some sort of dredge vine deck and at, actually that guy puts a a stop to what we're trying to do here a flying life linker but we'll go ahead and throw out some militants and we're just gonna have to grind this out do you know what do we make a trade here with the sarah ascendant i think he's some sort of devotion based deck so i think i do Make him take down his devotion. I think this is fine trade. Some people might disagree with this, but it puts me up to a 41 and takes away. Like, I can't attack into that Vampire Nighthawk whatsoever. It's impossible for me. So the board would just stale out. And I think the later it goes anyway, the better it is for us. And there's a Blood Artist. So we could kill both Grave Craws. I don't care about taking damage, of course. We'll swing, swing back onto him. And there's another Sarah Ascendant anyway. So we'll go ahead and throw the Sarah's Ascendant out. And attacking with both Militants, putting him down to a 14. So some sort of Blood Artist combo. Which, interesting deck. Very interesting deck. I still think it's some sort of Devotion-based deck, though. Because I'm thinking that, yeah, this is gonna the Undying Zombie is going to come out here. Yeah, Messenger. And maybe Frexing Obliterators in here as well. But at a 36 life and now with a flyer, it's going to be very hard. It seems like he's packed full of creatures, not with much ways to interact. So we're just going to go ahead, throw out the Soul Attendant. That kind of uh, makes the Blood Artist a little bit negated. And we'll swing it with everything. And he's going to block a Dried Militant. Yeah, that's that's definitely awesome because now he doesn't have a recurring grave grave collar combo with his his guy. So still at uh, forty life, 
And two cards left in his hand. He seems to be a very, very mana flooded. So I'll bring in Rest in Peace. I'll probably take out my own Return of the Ranks and just bring in the one of Rest in Peace. And there's Messenger, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is going to be a Black Devotion base deck. But, I mean, we had a, a, a really, really strong hand against him. And again, I was attacking with the Ascendant, getting him down to a 6. Back up to a 40. And I think I'll just Martyr here, actually. Rather than Squadron Hawk. That way, if I draw a land, I can Squadron Hawk and gain a gazillion life. So two cards left in his hand. He does have some nice little undying stuff. Yep. I do not care about taking three life. He's got to find some sort of answer for the Sarah's Ascendant. See if he goes another messenger here. It's going to be a Pyroclasm, so we'll gain an obscene amount of life. And now I'm wishing I would have actually blocked the messenger. But he sees that I can gain 12 more life. Still have my 6-6. Six, six. And yeah, it's going to be impossible for him to come back. So he's running Pyroclasm. All right, champions will all come in here. Um, Path to Exiles will come in here as well. And oh, I thought I had a Rest in Peace in the sideboard. Apparently, I forgot to include a Rest in Peace in the sideboard. So the Militants are actually quite weak in this in this deck. We can cut the Militants, and the Return of the Ranks can stay in. In fact, both Return of the Ranks can come in. I think it's a very powerful card versus him. Squadron Hawks are, are also very powerful. So this is a, kind of a hard little decision what I have to do here. I know he's running a lot of those Pyroclasms, but I still think Soul Wardens are, are worth it. And all of the Pures are absolutely worth it. I, Squadron Hawks are great. Champions are great. I'm thinking I, Spectral Processions might be the weak link. I want to keep in a number. I'm going to, I'm going to cut a 1 of Honor of the Pure and a 1 of Spectral Processions and hope that that ends up being the right play. I don't want to get flooded with either of those versus this deck. And I just think the Squadron Hawks in this matchup are just a little bit more powerful as it allows more creatures to go to my graveyard for the Return of the Ranks. So, again, it's just going to be... And it fills up my hand also for the Martyrs. So I need to add a Rest in Peace in the sideboard. It's been one of those things that I thought I did. Maybe I didn't... Um, save the right deck or open up the right deck version of this but there's so many graveyard with storm back in the metagame i think rest in peace is an auto include in the sideboard and maybe go down a a stony silence i haven't been seeing much tron or much affinity even though against affinity stony silence isn't even a must it's something that is just kind of overkill you you already have a great matchup versus the affinity lists but I'm um, this okay. So this is a great hand, Squadron Hawk Ranger, uh, Path to Exile, the Path either Blood Artist is fine. See, also the Rest in Peace shuts down Blood Artist, so you, Rest in Peace would be very, very good card against this deck, or even a uh, Relic of Progenitus. I think that Rest in Peace and White's a little bit better. I mean, Relic can you can still run your own Return to the Ranks, but anywho, so I'll just I'll just go ahead and throw out a Sarah's Ascendant. It makes them freak out, and a lot of times I can get a removal spell for it. So no turn, first turn thought sees. And he is probably worried about that martyr. He just scoops. Okay, buddy. I did not have a martyr in my hand. You don't have to scoop. He, it's, it's, oh, he's going to show me his hand. He, he draws. Okay, well, okay, fine. Show me that you kept a very, very loose, stupid hand. That's fine with me. Don't, don't keep a hand with that. Like, what is he, what is he wanting to draw into here? He's wanting to draw into a... A red source for Lightning Bolt is best case scenario and, and maybe cast a Blood Artist. Um, He has to draw to two lands in a row to really make this hand worth it. As it's going to need to get Vampire Nyak. But anywho, even if he misses land drop here, he's still okay. I got a little bit flooded. Even the flood allows for the... the uh, I would have drawn the Pride Mate, but not the Ascendant because it, it would have been cycled away with squadron hawk but and then this i guess this wouldn't have been drawn either but any eventually ranger would have would have outclassed any of his draws but he could easily drawn vampire or into double sources and it's at least had the board stalled for a while so 
Anywho, I don't agree with just scooping like that. But uh, again, this is Soul Sisters is going to punish these type of decks. I, I've seen a lot of Blood Artist decks lately. And I guess Vampire Nighthawk with Lightning Bolt not being as big of a card or... or uh, I, I just... Yeah, it's a Black Devotion deck, so Vampire Nighthawk is an auto-include. There's some cool cards from, like, the uh, Lorwyn block, though, for Double Black that I was looking at. Um, I was going through some Lorwyn cards the other day, and there was definitely some some pretty sweet uh, Triple Devotion Black cards that you can play nowadays with, with the Black Devotion. But this seems to be just, like, a value deck with Blood Artist, Grave Crawlers, Vampire Nighthawks, uh, Messenger, kind of the Innistrad block type deck. And I'm sure Phyrexian Obliterator is going to be here, and, and then Dross Messenger. So it can it can do some burst damage. I, probably Bloodgast is in here too for Devotion. I would assume. I'm I'm, I'm not sure what the the Mono Black Devotion. They have so many options at this point. I just don't know if it's quite viable. If it can really. He didn't seem to have a lot of like thoughts. He's Inquisition of Kozlix. I guess the deck that does have access to it. But uh, unfortunately, right now there is so many like Storm Tron Scape Shift. You have to have some way to interact with your opponent's combos and. At least having white with Soul Sister, you have access to a ton of hate cards in the sideboard. But anywho, I'll quit talking about this match. We'll go on to another match. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.